Valentine's Day 2021 is probably going to be the most strangest Valentine's Day of the decade. So let's see how am I going to spend this day. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tara Bahab, I'm an artist and on this channel I share contents relating to living a healthy and successful creative lifestyle. You know, I've been thinking about this whole pandemic and the fact that we've been sitting at home. I don't know, wherever that you are things might be different but it's been a strange year so far. Last year was strange, this year is even stranger. And I was thinking of things that I want to do and I really just want to have fun. I feel like I'm, I'm getting numb <laughs> by staying at home and just working and it feels like we don't have any fun whatsoever at all. So anyway, my intention for this video is to really have fun and I hope that you would enjoy watching this video. So the things that I'm going to be doing, I really want to dress up because it's been about 11, 11 months now that I haven't gone out to any kind of party or get together with friends. So I really miss just <laughs> dressing up. And then after that, I'm going to do something relaxing and sensual. So I was thinking of taking a salt bath with some essential oils and Ooh. candles. I don't know, I'm just gonna make it as romantic as possible. And then after that, I'm gonna go for a walk. I will be naming 15 lessons I learned from my past romantic relationships or just relationships in general. So I hope that you stay until end of this video. And while I'm having fun, <laughs> I hope that you would enjoy watching me as well. Let's get to it. Okay, I have some of my favorite outfits here. My Canada Day outfit, my black classy pleated dress, pleated skirts, white and pattern, my blue dress, a burgundy dress, and Tara Bahab's newspaper dress, which is sold out, but I'm making another one. How much outfits matter in a relationship? What kind of outfit would be a deal breaker for you? Have you ever ended a relationship because your person was not caring enough about their outfit and how they look? I think it is important that both parties of the relationship put some effort into looking good. Not necessarily for impressing others, but first and foremost for yourself and expressing yourself. I know, it sounds self-explanatory, but part of being healthy is taking care of your looks, especially for a special occasion. Taking care of appearance and the posture boosts confidence. Of course, going through this pandemic, many of us are experiencing depression and isolation, and that definitely affects our level of self-care. It is understandable that we might not look, feel, or even smell our best. I used to see a guy who I felt every time he was supposed to see me, he would intentionally downgrade his appearance. I was not sure why. Maybe he thought he was testing me. Because I know sometimes girls do this to test a person and see if he finds her attractive enough even without putting makeup on or dressing up. I found it quite unattractive to be honest. Appearance matters. And those people who do all these testings and mind games, in my humble opinion, are insecure. Insecurity needs a cure. And those people must not rely on a relationship for that. You know, like those people who view getting into a relationship as a way to get saved in life. You can enjoy every part of your life only when you take full responsibility for your actions, thoughts, and emotions. On the other hand, there are those types of people who all they care about is appearance. They are most likely not caring about what you are talking about, while mentally calculating your bra size, 
or they are eagerly inviting you to specific gatherings just to show off. Well, that is also very unattractive. So how about this outfit? I think I'm gonna choose this one. I feel like I should be singing. Let me see if I can find any lyrics to sing. Sad song, sad song. Oh, this one. As an 80s song, maybe? Should I try? Should I try? Let me try. If I don't see you, make me notice you. Now I free you. Surprise me, darling. Impress me, darling. Okay, I think that was good. Now let's move on to my next activity. Now I want to do something more relaxing. I was going for this kind of look, but I ended up with this. <laughs> and it is okay. We are in a pandemic still, and I use what is available to me without me making too many trips to a store. I made a video about self-care and self-love last year and I really emphasized on the fact that we need to make time for ourselves and not wait for someone else to come in our life to make us feel special. Make it a ritual if you will. For some people, taking a salt bath, buying flowers for themselves or doing different activities by themselves may sound silly or waste of time, money and products. But you won't know it unless you take the action and experience it. It might even feel like it is a lot of work to do, but it's good to know how it would feel like if you do all of this work for yourself and then what it would mean to you if one day you are going to offer this as a gesture of love and care to someone else. Especially if you have recently been heartbroken, having a self-care ritual helps with healing and recovering. However, self-care and self-love doesn't have to be all spas or getting a manicure and pedicure. It is about finding activities you enjoy to do by yourself. Being alone doesn't have to be lonely. They say introverts are better at being alone and doing these activities, while extroverts find it difficult and they usually prefer to be in a social situation even for healing. But you don't have to be an introvert in order to enjoy spending time with yourself. So I'm going to take a salt bath with some essential oils and candlelight and have a fancy drink, some nice and relaxing music and enjoy myself. Taking a salt bath is a great way to recharge yourself. I'm going to use Epsom salt. Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate is used on a widespread basis to provide relief for a variety of conditions. These include skin irritation and inflammation, sore feet, sore muscles, sprains, stiff joints, stress and sunburn. All right, so I'm all ready for my salt bath. I have prepared everything. I have my Epsom salt in there and some of this rose aroma. Mm -hmm. And, oops, oops, I have this homemade sour cherry wine that I'm going to try. Mm. Well, I'm going to enjoy and relax. Do not try to take a salt bath if you have an open wound or skin rash. So why am I taking this salt bath? It is worth to mention that if you want to achieve anything significant in life, you absolutely need to practice deep relaxation and resting on a regular basis. So if you're single or not and watching this video and wondering when you're going to finally meet your significant other or finally have whatever it is you feel you deserve to have in your life, I tell you that you will have it all when you deeply relax and happily take care of yourself. When you are well rested and relaxed, you can think more clearly. When you think clearly, you make better decisions and take better actions. When you take better actions, you feel much better about yourself and your life. You know, at the beginning of the lockdown, I told myself I'm gonna come out of this pandemic even healthier than before. Because before the pandemic, I was still struggling with my recovery from a car accident I experienced five years ago. And healthy to me means feeling good about my body, having a balance of exciting thoughts and emotions, which creates my mood, character and personality. So here I am. To be honest, it was kind of weird recording myself in a bathtub, but now I'm well rested and I'm going to go to my next activity. So I get out. It's a beautiful day today. Very nice and sunny. It's only minus 24 degrees. 
How awesome is that? <laughs> Rhyme river, I'm not believing. You wanted to be my man. Love, love, and love. Have you ever noticed believing. all we sing about is love? What is love? What is love, baby? Everyone can have a different perspective on love, loving, and being in a relationship based on DNA, family history, social status, financial situation, culture, our generation, the first romantic encounter can all play a role in how one bonds with another and loves. I think relationships are like plants. They need to be watered and maintained regularly and when we for whatever reason neglect to do so, we lose those plants. They dry out and we lose those relationships. Some people use getting a job analogy to view finding getting into and maintaining a relationship. Although I do not like this analogy, to some extent it makes sense. When one is applying for a job, they have to back their promises with their resume, education and past work experience. They also have to consistently show up at work or they don't get paid. I've heard many love stories of friends and strangers confiding in me or seeking counsel. So I decided to make a list of 15 lessons I've learned from each of my romantic relationships as well as observing conflicts within other people's relationships. Let me know if you relate to any of them in the comments below. So number one, do not promise something you cannot deliver. If you talk about it, make sure to back it up with actions. Number two, slow and steady always wins the fast and fiery passion. Number three, do not be shy with what you desire and be honest. If we cannot agree or accept our differences, the quicker we part, the faster is the recovery time. Well, oftentimes, not always. Number four, it is okay to be confused and not knowing clearly what you want, but make sure to communicate this right at the beginning. Number five, it is possible to draw boundaries and bonding healthy in a short amount of time. This is for more mature individuals. Number six. Do not wait for the other person to tell you what they want before you tell them clearly what you want. Number seven. If you want commitment and consistency, communicate and demonstrate it yourself first. Number eight. Loyalty is built over time and trust, but not on attraction alone. Number nine. Know your chemistry, know your level of libido, know your sexual orientation. Find out your own label and get to know yourself. What kind of sexual being are you? It's important that you would know. Number 10. If you feel sneakiness or betrayal, you are probably right. Do not doubt it. Number 11. Without respect, there is no love. Therefore, there is no relationship. Insulting, humiliating, or silence treatment do not fall under respect. Number 12. I am not your mother and you are not my father. Number 13. If you don't talk it out, everybody else will talk it out for us behind our backs. It is not about who is right, but what is right. Number 14. If you're not terrified of expressing your interests or how this relationship will work out or if it will end, then you're not truly in love. So you overcome the fear for love. Which leads to number 15. Some people commit suicide if their love confession is rejected, but most people survive the rejection, after which they realize who they truly are by seeing different facets of themselves, and a very small group experience spiritual growth beyond their own understanding. Which leads to my bonus lessons, number 16. You can love someone a lot but not be in love with them. Sometimes that's what compatibility is. And for the fun of it, lesson number 17. Long distance relationships are most likely a myth. Remember the movie Her? She kept updating and upgrading. Nobody could be with her forever. And to be good and expert at love, you need to learn only 984 other lessons. After you establish your self-care ritual and feel relaxed, I think it's worth to take some time and reflect on what exactly you want from your love and relationships. Whether you are single or in a relationship, do this simple exercise. Write down everything you view as a perfect relationship. Use this note as an affirmation. I've been recently reading Khalil Gibran's books and I found a few quotes on love that I agree with and I would like to share with you. 
He says, Love possesses not, nor it would be possessed. His ways are hard and steep. And think not you can direct the course of love. For love, if it finds you worthy, it directs your course. On the subject of fulfilling marriage, in his book The Prophet, he says, You were born together, and together you shall be forevermore. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Fill each other's cup, but not drink from one cup. Stand together, but not too near, for the pillars of the temple stand apart. I personally very much resonate with this quote when he says, and some of you have called me aloof and drunk with my own aloneness. And you have said he holds counsel with the trees of the forest, but not with men. He sits alone on hilltops and looks down upon our city. True it is that I have climbed the hills and walked in remote places. How can one be indeed near unless he be far? We can all benefit from these classic words of wisdom that never get old. And I think love is never lost, and no one should ever give up on love. Out of 7 billion people living on the earth, it is almost impossible to believe that you won't be able to find someone, if not once, or someone finding you, who you would love and they would reciprocate your love. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, I wish you a happy and safe Valentine's Day 2021. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bells so you will be notified when my next video is released. Thank you so very much for watching, goodbye till next video. And no one is wrong, receiving your love, even if they end up breaking your heart.